Hi everybody, hope you're well. If you have been following along, by now you know that I have a soft spot for Japanese architects, photographers and books. So today I'll read from a book uh, first published in 1973 and revised and reprinted in 2017, Villages and Towns, uh, issue number four, devoted to medieval hill towns in Italy, photographed by Yukio Futagawa and published by GA. Tadashi Yokoyama wrote, when we visit Tuscany and Umbria, the contrast between the city and the countryside is stark. Looking out over the countryside, there is nothing other than the endless expanse of green fields with rare exceptions of small settlements. Amid such scenery, the city appears as a small white cluster on the top of a faraway hill. But a closer look reveals buildings densely packed inside medieval city walls, streets that are mostly narrow, and small windows of houses that open onto these streets. There are streets lined with houses so tall that the sunlight will never reach the ground. Buildings are made of piles of bricks or stones. Streets are inevitably paved with bricks or stones. It is all so different from Japanese cities where there is always some type of tree planted along the street for us to catch a glimpse of the earth. If trees and flowers were to be found, they would be planted in pots and boxes to be either hanged outside the windows or placed on the balcony as can be seen in Assisi. Humans are living in a compact manner inside an utterly artificial world that stands in contrast to the expansive countryside. While each one of the buildings that make up a street displays slight differences in expression, their walls are superimposed and integrated with one another. Streets and piazzas are totally paved, and uh, the entire city is uh, materially integrated. Such way of building a city is clearly a product of the Mediterranean stone culture. Urban areas of medieval cities north of the Alps do not display such homogeneity. In German and Flemish cities, for example, every single street-facing house is equipped with an independent facade with a triangular gabled roof lifted up high. Sometimes there is even a gap in between the buildings. The fact that all horizontal surfaces in medieval Italian cities were similarly paved must have been instrumental in driving the residents' consciousness towards the city as one collective, in a sense even more than the presence of city walls did. Citizens grew acutely aware of the unity of their own city as a collective precisely because uh, everything inside the city walls is integrated through the paved floors of streets and piazzas. The Duomo and the town hall with its high tower are visible from anywhere in the city. And their space, both in front of the Duomo as well as in the central square, that can accommodate all citizens. To define the nature of the piazza that forms the center of the city in one word proves to be an extremely difficult task. Piazzas have various functions. They are places where almost all citizens assemble to attend important events, festivals and ceremonies. They are places for entertainment, for games and most important of all, they are places where various markets are held every week, every month and every year. In a big city like Siena, the functions of a central square were divided into three piazzas. Piazza del Campo, Piazza del Duomo and Piazza del Mercato. I have to add that a piazza has yet one more function, which proves to be the most important. At the end of a day's work or during breaks, people hang around the piazza. Some stand idle, leaning against an arcade column, while others are lost in their thoughts sitting on a bench. When friends happen to come across each other, they instantly burst into vivid, insatiable conversations combined with heavy body language. There are children playing with uh, pigeons, there are old ladies sitting by a fountain knitting. Only the costumes are different. The scenery itself has not changed a bit since the 13th century. It is the same Italian daily life that has been repeated since the medieval times to the present day. 
Another similar example is the evening stroll that the Italians call passeggio, which causes people to suddenly flood a piazza as if coming out of nowhere. In considering how these customs came about, it may be inevitably attributed to living in cramped tiny dwellings. For those who live behind thick walls in dark houses where the sunshine hardly ever reaches the interior, the act of stepping into this much brighter space and talking with others must be an absolute necessity. The reason why Piazza del Campo in Siena shows such a refined configuration that is rarely seen among medieval piazzas in Italy is that the city imposed strict building codes and poured substantial amounts of funds for the paving of the piazza. The city ordinances of the Comune define the shape of a city in extremely detailed and visual fashion. Detailed rules over matters such as the height of towers in the city or type of pavement and wall surface line determine the medieval city we know today. Blessed with hills and valleys and featuring stone stairs and slopes, the city of Siena appears as if it were built haphazardly along its natural growth, which in reality was absolutely not the case. Even if at its uh, earlier stage the process was spontaneous, at least from the beginning of the 13th century, conscious planning took part in the process. In medieval Italy, each comune set a variety of city ordinances as well as sought to beautify the city by assigning officials in charge of what would now be called urban planning. Siena was among the most engaged in urban aesthetics. Especially the maintenance of Piazza del Campo was given the utmost priority. In the late 13th century, a declaration was announced to keep the buildings that surrounded Piazza del Campo free of balconies and to narrow the mullion of windows, probably in an attempt to match the facades to the first phase construction of Palazzo Publico that was undertaken between the late 13th century and the early 14th century. Moreover, a 1309 ordinance stipulated that walls along major city streets be covered with brick. After a brief rain, when the pavements and brick walls subtly take on humidity, the olden days are resurrected in the present world, and one has a feeling that a character right out of the paintings by Ambrogio Lorenzetti or Simone Martini might show up around the corner any moment. And this is why hill cities in Italy come to be a presence of nostalgia for those who are outsiders or foreigners. As for the whole series of villages and towns at your local bookstore, thank you very much for watching this video and see you in the next one. Bye.